Oh, the committee to order. Is it going to be the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic. One nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll start with a roll call. Mayor Lindsay? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Howe? Here. Councilor Crane? Here. Councilor Weeks? Here. Councilor Humbert? Here. We have a quorum. We may proceed. This time I'd like to ask for a motion for the approval of the agenda. I make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 At this time, I'd like uh, to ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda. I make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, moving on to requests and responses from the audience, limited to three minutes uh, for items not pertaining to this agenda. We had a few people sign up. Uh, Mr. Mike Maloney. Good evening, Councilor Mayor. Don't have anything to say tonight. I was informed by my attorney to bring you guys a letter and each one of you, the Council Mayor. Councilor Mayor. That's all I have. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, we also have Steve and Patty Hensel. Uh, thank you all for the three minutes. Appreciate it. Steve Hensel, 61 for the Bears. I guess I've been kind of given the uh, the uh, the position from for a bunch of our homeowners that live on our Miho to just uh, come to the council. And I know some of you all are aware. I don't know if everybody's aware. Of what's being done over by the Grand, or just west of the of the Grand, there's a lot of uh, machinery over there, building material, and the owners kind of got together and just wanted to come to the council and just make sure that you know they're keeping an eye on what's going on over there as far as uh, easements, setbacks, uh, impact on wildlife, drainage. We don't know what's being built or what plans are for that area over there. And we just have a concern. We just didn't want something, obviously, that wasn't aesthetically pleasing. We don't know what power we have, or if any, or what you, what you have. But we just wanted to bring it to light at the meeting, so it's written down, and we all can look further into it. But we we don't have any more information than that. But um, we just wanted wanted that to be out in the in the, in the open. You see what what all could be done about that. Thank you, Mr. Yep. <clears throat> uh, moving on to any announcements and uh, proclamations by the council. I, if no one has anything, I would just like to state when we get into our uh, agenda items, I would like to change the format slightly. So when we get to say, when we get to the first item, I will call for discussion and I would like us to engage in any discussion on that item. And then once discussion has ceased, then ask for a motion. And in doing so, I think we can remedy amending motions, if that makes sense, after the discussion has been made. So a slight change in procedure on our end. So we'll, we'll give that a shot tonight if it's all right with everybody. Uh, moving on to staff reports. Um, Shay? She jumped up to volunteer first. <laughs> Good evening. Just uh, wanted to give you guys an update about what's going on in uh, my department, the Parks and Rec. Uh, the playground equipment got delivered yesterday, so it's sitting out there right now. Um, they're moving along on the, the playground good. The railings are up and it's it's moving pretty much as expected. Installation is supposed to be mid to late October. So that equipment will be sitting there for a little bit. 
the west side of the roof extension, uh, waiting on materials for the uh, um, the change order that we had to do, and that's going to be about a couple weeks. And um, that's it for that. The, we have a blood drive tomorrow, if anybody's interested, from 9 to one thirty, And then mobile voting is going to be on the 21st of October. Uh, Dennis Engineering is working on the plan and design for the Allen Fields. I haven't got an update on that lately, but that's, he has everything he needs so far, I believe. Uh, the, the high school has soccer till the end of October, and then I usually close the gates on or put the, the chain up for the field. Um, the Trails Committee is working on the Frank Young Trail Extension. That's been their main priority, which is the extension from the Allen um, up to the Allen Fields and then the high school. And I'll, we're working on a grant, but that's later on the agenda. So. <laughs> any questions? Thank you for the update. Thank you. Uh, any other staff reports this evening? No, Brandon. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Brandon Prather, event manager. Uh, I'm here to present. I brought a tentative event plan for the rest of this year and all of 2025. Uh, planning's going well. Uh, Oktoberfest here. What is that next weekend or the next weekend? It's coming up. It's pretty much all put together. Got vendors, got uh, its corner. We're gonna have some brats and everything we need. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Everything's going well and uh, according to the plan. Where's the tree lighting ceremony gonna be? Today? It's gonna be at the visitor center. Awesome. Yeah, we're gonna have we're gonna have the plaza all lit up and the front tree to the north there. Uh, lit up. Great. Anything else? Thank you. There's been a lot of plan. That's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mr. Epler? Yeah, I know I, uh, I'm sorry. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, Mr. Lear, and Mr. Weir. I know I gave an update last council meeting, but some other things have come up that I, I wanted to do another if you were short. Uh, just a quick update on the uh, repaving of uh, South Angel Fire Road, the paving of Aspen Street and the repaving of Jackson Hole. Uh, I spoke with the contractors today. They're hoping to be here a uh, week after next. Uh, with weather and other things, it's kind of set them back a little bit. I think this will, hopefully, hopefully the weather will cooperate and still keep us within our optimum temperature window uh, to do that. Uh, I did want to update that as of four o'clock this afternoon, we have uh, we have placed new base course on nine miles of road throughout Angel Fire. Uh, a lot of that material is being placed uh, right now in El Camino Real. Our goal is to uh, get the material on site. There's some areas that still need some work, some processing. It's coming together pretty nice. Uh, progress is going pretty good. We uh, just yesterday finished the bottom three miles, which is from the end of the pavement on Vail up to the intersection with Royal. And uh, we're starting on Royal or have made a, a progress on Royal today. Um, the, um, the last thing I need to update on, uh, we got some information. In uh, one of our prior meetings, the, we were on, uh, discussing the subject of the undersized water lines throughout the community. And a question was asked about the potential of doing some of that work in house. <clears throat> I was a little caught off guard by the by the question. I'm sorry I did I wasn't uh, better prepared to answer it. But uh, even at that time, I didn't have a clear picture of the scope of what we were looking at. Uh, here's the gist of it. I got the totals throughout the village. We have seven thousand five hundred and twenty feet of two inch lines. 76,301 feet of three inch lines and 143,241 feet of four inch lines. So obviously that changes our focus from the thought of potentially doing some of that, uh, this in-house or with even, uh, even within budget to uh, moving forward to, to try to seek grant dollars. I think a real conservative estimate would be $50 million and years in the making. Um, so what we'll be discussing is uh, first step we've got to do is, is plan and design, get the project shovel ready to receive the grand dollars. And that's all I have. Thank you for the update. 
Mr. Mayor, yes, sir. Oh, mine. <laughs> Just to add on that framing and engineering that uh, Director Eckler is talking about is estimated to be close to $2 million in cost, which is going to eat up uh, basically all the cash reserves that we have currently in the joint utility department. We'll be looking at that. I mean, we'll obviously need to strategically look at two inch, three inch points. I don't know that it all needs to be done at the same time. Um, I think they're all large undertakings. There'll be a lot of discussions that take place. Um, starting with our roads and infrastructure committee, obviously. So, again, thank you both for the information. Okay, if there's no other staff reports this evening, move on to committee reports. Um, as you know, the item A is the our vote on the resolution, but I will say that Colfax County did approve their resolution yesterday morning uh, to further the effort for the transfer of the airport. Okay. We don't have any old business to attend to, so we'll move into new business. Item A, um, discussion for the approval of resolution 24-69 transfer of the Colfax County Airport KAXX to the Village of Angel Fire. Um, it's really KAXX known as the Angel Fire Airport. Um, before we start any further discussion, I'd like Manager Weir to address an issue that we had with the agenda. Manager. Um, Mr. Mayor, yes, on the, um, so we, we did the initial release of the agenda on uh, either Wednesday evening or Thursday morning, Thursday morning. Um, so the agenda went out. We uh, later added this item A to the agenda on Friday, um, and it was posted in all of our posting locations, the five posting locations that we have. And it, an email was sent to the administrator of the website to upload the agenda. Uh, and that was at 9.37 Friday morning. And um, unfortunately, there was not follow-up done and the agenda did not get posted until Monday morning. Um, so I know there's concern about the 72 hour rule. Uh, right after I learned that, uh, one of the first things I did is called legal counsel. Uh, Ms. Nan Winters, who is here with us today, and um, uh, asked her for advice uh, based on the uh, the scope of the resolution that we will be asking you to approve. In that, it's not uh, a huge. There's there's not money uh, directly related to this. We're not buying something. It's not a um, it's not a contract that we're signing with anybody. It's uh, basically what's in the resolution is just to show the county that the uh, village council supports the idea of transferring it. Uh, the actions that it calls for in the resolution, I could uh, have done without coming to council. And because of that, because it's not a, a, um, a hugely significant uh, item as far as uh, the operation of the government, and uh, the fact that we did have it posted properly in uh, the uh, other locations, uh, legal counsel advised that we could go ahead and proceed with it in this agenda, uh, but she does recommend that we also place it in the next agenda just to cover all bases, which is what we plan on doing. So we will ask you to vote on this uh, today and um, so that we can proceed with some work that we uh, have scheduled with the county, um, but we will bring it back just to cover all bases at the next council meeting for you to vote on again. Thanks, Andrew. Um, any questions for the, for the council? <coughs> when, I have, um, no, I go ahead. When do you anticipate a final vote that we would need to take on this? <coughs> And I'm gonna, I want to say something before I can vote on actually doing this. I need to see some financials. Will we be able to see this? What is it going to cost us to actually 
uh, transfer this in. I believe you mentioned that there's a $400,000 loan against the property. We would have to pay for that. What other expenses there just for the transfer? What are the finances, financial impact of uh, the immediate needs that need to be taken care of at the airport? And then a business plan <clears throat> with the financials as to what we need to do going forward to make this at least a break-even operation. So I can answer a lot of that for you, okay. Councilor Humbert. The what we're what what I'm asking you to look at this evening is simply a resolution to do the due diligence to find the answer to a lot of those questions you just posed. Okay. So until until we dedicate staff and attorneys into to really digging into what it's going to take to transfer the airport, we don't have a lot of those answers right now. I will say the airport transfer committee did put together a business plan and presented it to Colfax County yesterday um, when they considered the their resolution to continue the due diligence to transfer the airport. Uh, basically used the numbers in that that Colfax County has budgeted to operate the airport. Uh, we just basically copied and pasted that as of right now because we, again, don't have that information it being outside of our entity. But again, this resolution is not to purchase or transfer an airport. It's simply to engage staff and attorneys' um, time and effort, and obviously uh, the monies that are required to further, to, to get you exactly those answers that you posed. Okay. To the questions you posed. So, Mr. Mayor, I fully agree with uh, Councilor Humbert. Uh, Right now, I'm very concerned about what this is going to cost. Um, the county's budget that, that you were able to use was $147,000. My estimate is that if we take that over to do the airport right the first year, it should be about $300,000. We need to bring in a new management team. Our fellow that there is great, but he's going to need some help. We're going to need seven days a week coverage and a lot of other things. So if I decide to support this tonight, that doesn't necessarily mean I'll support it in the future. No, and I certainly appreciate that. Again, we'll, we'll be able to present those answers and have all that come to light. I will say that I don't I personally, and again, I, I don't have the answers in front of me either, and I can't wait to get that information. But I will say that that airport, um, as much as I want to see it run to cover costs or even run in the in the black, what it does for economic development in this area, what it can do to produce GRT, even if it's running at a loss, I think you will see the cost uh, fill based on what it can uh, bring to the valley if it's running at its full potential. But again, we can't explore any of this until we uh, agree to pass this resolution and look into it. I want to say you've got a lot of good projects on the drawing board, and I just want to make sure at the end of the day, our money's going to those that do us the most good. Agreed. Any other discussion? Yes, sir. If you would, please approach the podium and sit my Jim Rohde, I've been here about 20 years. I'm interested in where the airport's going. And the thing about aviation is it's expensive. All of the dollar figures we're accustomed to dealing with on a daily basis, I don't care what we do, it'll cost you more if you start messing with airplanes and airports. So this $400,000 figure is a general uh, idea of what may be a debt at the airport, but you can't buy a house in this town for that. And we're talking about buying the whole airport. If you would allow me, sir, I, I appreciate you bringing up that number. I don't know that I would, I would call that a debt. What that is, is that's money that the Colfax County has received in grants and they're responsible for a grant match. Mm -hmm. So they have put up land inside the airport as their portion of the grant match. So there's really not a debt coming with it, um, but just to clarify. Your All point. right, and I understand 
technical aspect of that. But as you go forward working with aviation expenses and the airport and the cost of doing business there, that will be a fairly insignificant number. Most of the airplanes that are of any consequence that park on the ramp out there cost more than that. So it's just that the impact on individuals who don't deal with those kind of dollar figures all the time can put them off. But when you're when you're talking about equipment coming in that can get as expensive as 20 million bucks, it's really not that much. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> Any other questions or discussion? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Howe, if you would make a motion. <clears throat> I make a motion to approve resolution 2024-69 transfer of Colfax County Airport to Village of Angel Fire. Could I ask you to amend the motion and just let's just use KAXX if we could please. I make a motion to approve resolution 2024-69 transfer of Colfax County Airport to KAXX. So I'm sorry, Mayor Pro Tem, I apologize for for getting caught in the weeds here, but the airport is currently KAXX. So we'd like to transfer KAXX from the county, Colfax County to the Village of Angel Fire. Looking to transfer uh, KAXX from Colfax County to the Village of Angel Fire. My motion to approve resolution 2024-69 to transfer KAXX to the village of Angel Fire. Thank you a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm getting a, it's getting okay. a little ahead of myself. <laughs> okay, we'll do a roll call vote on item A. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tim Howe? Aye. Councilor Crane? Aye. Councilor Weeks? Aye. Councilor Humbert? Aye. Approved. Okay, let's move on to item B. Uh, discussion for approval of the resolution 2024-67 participate in an NMDOT fund program for country club drive resurfacing. Uh, I think Julie can present. Okay, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor and Council and Chair and Clerk. Uh, before you, you have a resolution uh, asking for permission to participate in this program. We have received uh, funding from the TPF program from the state. Uh, the total cost of the program is $1,058,000. State is guaranteeing right now $1,005,000. They're leaving us with 53000 They're leaving us with 52900 and if you notice, the next resolution is to ask for a match waiver. <laughs> and I'll stand for any questions you may have. Are there any questions? What's the length of, of what this will accomplish? That's uh, from the current ending project of Country Club Drive St. Andrews Way down to 434. Okay. So the top of the parking lot, the lower parking lot at the golf course, the top mm -hmm. of that? Right, uh -huh. all the way down to 434. Okay, thank you. Mayor Pro Tem, I could ask for a motion. I make a motion to approve resolution 2024-67 to participate in NMDOT fund program for country club drive resurfacing. Second. We are. Roll call vote on item B. Mayor Pro Tem Howe? Aye. Councilor Crane? Aye. Councilor Weeks? Aye. Councilor Humbert? Aye. Pass. Okay, moving on to item C. Discussion uh, of brief resolution 2024-65 participate in the NMDOT fund match waiver program. Uh, once again, gentlemen, this resolution is get, granting myself permission to apply for the match waiver program. Uh, the match waiver will be $52,900. Uh, 
anything that the village uh, exceeds uh, the match waiver, it comes out of our pocket. So if we spend $53,000, that extra $100 is coming out of us. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Pro Tim, now, if you would please make a motion. Make a motion to approve resolution 2024-65, participate in NMDOT fund match waiver program. Second. Roll call vote on item C. Councilor Crane? Aye. Councilor Weeks? Aye. Mayor Pro Tim Howe? Aye. Councilor Humbert? Uh, yes. <laughs> Moving on to item D, discussion for the approval of Baristo as marketing agency resulting from RFP 2024-20 proposals. Um, is there anyone here to speak on that matter? Um, as far as um, I can say that the, uh, well, there's several, um, <clears throat> Do you want to talk about the committee's uh, tallies? Uh, but so, or I, I'll do it. I, I do it. But um, as far as the committee, the you know the scores were uh, the highest points were for Caristo, Cottonwood second, and Mejon Rose third. And I think as far as um, the um, um, Rogers Tax Committee, those were. Pretty much the same. The infinite can be better. I'll wait for Eagle Eye Larger Tax Committee. Um, the uh, committee that the review committee all came with, um, with, the, with the results you came with, ours were slightly different for number three. But it was unanimous in both committees? Uh, number one was unanimous in both committees by, by all parties. <clears throat> Are there any other questions or discussion? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, what do we expect the cost of this contract to be? Well, if, if I believe it's in, uh, you should have received it in your packet. We didn't get a contract. You didn't get uh, no. a copy of the RFP? Um, anywhere? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, Councilman Howell. So, when you go through an RFP like this, you agree on who the vendor is, and then you negotiate the contract, and then the contract comes back to the council for approval. And that is that is the way an RFP works. As a matter of fact, uh, most RFPs, when you do an RFP, a, a request for a proposal, as opposed to a request for a bid, it's, uh, and maybe uh, our CPO can speak to this, uh, but actually, your an RFP is designed to pick the best vendor, not necessarily the best price. Uh, so, yes, an RFP you're looking at the qualifications of the person. RFB you're looking at lowest bid. So, uh, price is a consideration, but it's not the only major consideration. So, you're looking at the qualifications of the proposal. Okay, so what are we asking a contractor to do? Uh, what was well, so yeah, we do. Have, I apologize for you not having a copy of the RFP uh, uh, to review previously. But again, I will point out, not again, that the the review committee did review and score it as with the, the Lodgers Tax Committee. Uh, and it came back to the for Carista. So the RFP did, that they all replied to describes exactly what we would be expecting uh, for the service. There's a scope of work stated in the RFP. So there will be and the RFP was approved by the council. I'm almost certain that we didn't see it. Well, no, to, to the issue the RFP. To issue the RFP. Uh, we voted, a uh, governing body voted to issue the RFP. This, this, this uh, and I apologize, this is, as Manager Weir pointed out, um, the process. Julie, maybe you can help explain versus what we just did with the roads. Yes. Uh, so your RFP for advertising marketing services, you're, um, right now, from my understanding, you're requesting a notice of award. You'll issue a notice of award, notice to proceed. You'll get the contract back from our uh, legal. They'll review it, goes to council. 
council signs off. Right now, you're, from my understanding, this would be more of a notice to proceed with Caristo murder. I'm sorry if I butcher the name, but basically to proceed with that vendor under the RFP award. Well, I'm not going to argue with the manager, but in my 15 years here, I've never seen it done this way. Could you give us an example? Pardon? Could you give us an example? And so the contract has always come to council so that we could actually look at council before. So that's what I think that's what Julie stated and Manager Weir is that it's a notice to proceed. Right. So now that they've been awarded that, not not awarded, they haven't been until, of course, we vote and they're in an award, but to proceed to put together that contract to bring before council. And then that contract's coming back to council? Yes. Do we have to? So, so essentially, we are voting on the the resolution to um, enter into negotiations. Enter into negotiations. There, there is not a dollar figure assigned to this yet, though once they've been selected as the firm, their scope of working contract will have to come back before council. I do not work on this RFP, Councilor. I'm sorry. Um, I'm assuming that they put some kind of ballpark numbers together and that the evaluation committee evaluated uh, the once again the qualifications of this proposal more so than the, the cost associated with it because you are looking for qualifications of the of the vendor. Okay, I will say I read every one of these. It took me most of the day. But, and I will say that I have no doubt that all of these companies are well qualified. Now, I ranked them in my own thinking, which was different from the way the scores ranked it, but I wasn't using their matrix, so you know, that's understandable. But uh, my, my concern is, um, did this go out as a one-year thing or multiple years? That I... I, I see that's usually I mean, it's in the contract because, because when I read years. this for professional services, it'd be like a four year contract. Every one of them said this is the first year, which tells me this must have gone out as a multi year thing, and, and that kind of concerns me. From my experience, if you're entering a professional services contract, it's usually a four year contract, like we do for engineering services, and then at the end of four years, you have to resubmit an RFP out. But that once again, that would go to attorneys and be put in the contract. And I will add that there is still some uh, confusion as to whether advertising is an exemption or not from the procurement code, or what the definition of advertising is. But we felt at this point that we should go through the RFP process, mm -hmm. uh, and that's exactly what we've done. Yeah. It was the letter of the law that was followed here. And I'm not sure what your recollections are, what happened previously, but this is the process that is um, uh, specified in state procurement code. But I'll also point out in the last four years, there hasn't been an RFP for marketing, even though you spent well above the $60,000 threshold with multiple companies, there was never an RFP done. Yeah. Uh, I believe what Mason Rose Agency, there was an RFP. There was not an RFP. RFP. There was a proposal brought to Lodgers Tax. That the Lodgers Tax Committee approved, and then the contract came to council, which is not the way to do an RFP. It doesn't qualify as an RFP. All right, that's the end of my comments. <laughs> Any further discussion? Mayor Pro Tem Howe, could you please make a motion? Make a motion to approve Caristo as marketing agency resulting from RFP 2024-20 proposals. Second. Manager Lira. <clears throat> Roll call vote on Adam D. Mayor Pro Tem Howe. Nay. Councilor Crane. Aye. <coughs> Councilor Weeks? Aye. Council Humbert? Aye. Pass. Moving on to item E, discussion 
for the approval of resolution 2024-66, utilizing carryover cash uh, bars totaling $220,800. Uh, Manager Weir. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. There are, um, as you can see in the resolution itself, it gives us a description of each of the different uh, bars that we're asking you to approve. Uh, in each case, the, um, the funds are coming out of uh, carryover cash from prior year, which I'll remind the council we have uh, in excess of $12 million. And uh, these are for items that, um, in some cases, most of the cases were items purchased in the prior year under the prior budget, but we did not receive the items until after June 30th. And um, there were anticipated by management to be received prior to June 30th. So they didn't get included in the current year budget because they were anticipated being paid for in the prior year budget. Um, all of these uh, items except one uh, did have money in the budget for it in the prior year. Uh, and the other one is uh, the item that uh, didn't is uh, some items that just simply we hadn't contemplated in the budgeting process, but they're items that we uh, would like to spend money on. That one item was HR. Um, was for training. Uh, we're going to be conducting a training class for our leadership team. Uh, it's going to be an eight course class uh, starting in October 5th and going through the month of November on uh, team building and, and leadership. So that was one item that uh, is was not budgeted in the prior year. Questions for Manager Weir? Mr. Howe, could you please make a motion? I make the motion to approve resolution 2024-66, utilizing carryover cash bars totaling $220,800. Second. We'll call vote on item E. Mayor Pro Tem Howe? Aye. Council Strain? Aye. Councilor Weeks? Aye. Councilor Humper? Aye. Thanks. Moving on to item F. Discussion uh, group change order for RFP 24 011 Road Project Services. Uh, Director Epler. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council. <clears throat> uh, what we're proposing here is a change order uh, to the uh, Road Project Services project we have with uh, where a contractor is spreading the base course on uh, four, ident four identified uh, project locations. <clears throat> uh, we saw an opportunity with, uh, as well as we're progressing and the availability of the truck and dollars available in budget uh, to address a couple of other areas uh, while we're there. Uh, the first of which being a portion of Vista del Sur and El Camino Real which is actually uh, part of uh, a pretty ideal haul route for the trucks to get to the upper portion of El Camino Real. Uh, but there's approximately 2,000 2, foot section of it uh, that is, is raw with no base course on it whatsoever, just dirt. Uh, but also uh, being in the area and as we're progressing, uh, Cheerful Way, which is a, a, a you know pretty significant it gets a road that gets a pretty significant amount of use uh, and it's 5,780 feet long. And while we're in the area, again, have dollars in budget uh, to do this and uh, and get an extra road in while we're up there. So that's what we're proposing. That uh, total cost between the two is an uh, addition of $55,800. <clears throat> And Mr. Mayor, I would like to add that currently um, with the money that we had budgeted for the current year um, on this type of base course work, we are under budget uh, and we're approaching our goal of uh, the 10 miles that we shot for this year. Uh, so we're going to be under budget with that. 
As a matter of fact, uh, Director Epler and I have considered changing the goal next year to 20 miles. I know it's a little aggressive, but uh, uh, we think if we get started early enough that we might be able to uh, do 20 miles next summer. Any further questions or discussion? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, any word, please? Make a motion to approve change order for RFP 24-011 Road Project Services. Second. Roll call vote on item F. <clears throat> Councilor Crane? Aye. Councilor Humper? Aye. Councilor Weeks? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Hall? Aye. Pass. Moving on to item G. Discussion. <clears throat> Uh, for approval, change order to tank seven replacement project for altern alternative fence material. Uh, As uh, part of the tank seven uh, project, it's a requirement that the area be contained in a fence. And uh, current design calls for standard six foot chain link fence. Uh, we, uh, after much discussion, we thought that uh, perhaps there would be an option uh, more aesthetically pleasing than just a uh, plain old chain link fence. Uh, so what I'm proposing is a, a change to, uh, it's a brown ornamental wire security fence, uh, similar in design uh, to, to chain link, but in a brown earth tone, dark earth tone color. And uh, what this change does in cost of materials, uh, the cost of materials for a standard chain, six foot chain link fence is $48,000. The uh, uh, changing to the brown is seventy-one thousand dollars, for difference of twenty-three thousand. And, and just if you would refresh my memory, there was never a specific budget item for the fencing, uh, budget-wise. Not budget-wise. It, it was part of the Tank Seven project, right? And it was specced with this fence that you're changing. Yes. Um, and and and. and how is the budget on the tank seven project? Well, the the uh, estimate by file construction uh, actually came in under the available funds, uh, leaving funds available within the project to cover this cost and uh, some other things that we would want to do. Uh, things that we've identified is to uh, to pay for the SCADA upgrade on tank seven out of that uh, funding instead of out of budget. Uh, and I'm also uh, Part of this, we're going to want to do some landscaping around this to make it aesthetically pleasing. And now that the project is near completion, uh, obviously the work won't start till spring. Uh, but I think we're in a position now where we can show a, a landscape architect uh, what we have to work with and, and uh, you know, probably potentially do an RFP uh, if we don't find somebody with statewide pricing agreement to do a design for landscaping on there. Uh, that is of the things we'd like to do. That's probably the biggest unknown, or and potentially the larger cost of these items we want to add on. Uh, there, I'm hoping that there's enough left in that fund that we can upgrade the uh, the structure that covers the number seven pump house, which is pretty dilapidated. That we could pay for out of this fund, this fund as opposed to paying for it out of budget. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd just like to add, or I think the council knows this, but a reminder that in the easement agreement that we have for tank seven with the resort, it does require um, that we do, uh, uh, you know, that we do items to try and block the view of the tank to the best that we can. So um, that is a requirement within the easement agreement. I've got one comment. There, there's a there's a zero missing. It looks like it's a twenty three dollar difference, not a twenty three thousand dollar difference. Saw that right when I read it. Apologize for that. Yeah. And then uh, I guess is the fence going in the original place that it was <laughs> planned to go on the uh, engineers design? There there has been talk about potentially realigning it to where it's not all the way to the edge of of the project area, uh, but I think to get feedback on how that alignment should go i'd like to get some of that feedback from the landscape architect and how it would tie in with their plan right i do want to add that um, 
even though the the landscaping is not part of the original project that we we still can cover it uh, from this project uh, fund uh, but also we're at the point you know ordering fencing right now this colored fencing is uh is six to eight weeks out so what we'll be doing moving forward because file construction has done a great job the tank is due to go online potentially by the end of this week if we get uh, the old tank emptied in time um, so what we're looking at doing is we will do substantial completion on the project and the fencing portion of it will be a punch list item because we'll be to the point obviously weather's going to catch us and the ground's going to start freezing so fencing would be put in place in the spring. Um, I've got to say this also does buy us some time if uh, when we do discuss uh, opportunities with the landscape architect, uh, he may have a suggestion on fencing that would satisfy Homeland Security and maybe even be nicer looking than what I propose. But for now, I mean, I needed to kind of initiate the decision if this is what's, what we're going to go with. It's, it's very... Uh, understandable if we don't move forward with this right now if uh if we want more time to look at other alternatives and and wait for feedback from the landscape architect if we wait for feedback from the landscape architects and then so let's let's say we approve this this evening and then we get feedback from the landscape architect on alignment it sounds to me like well, this this fence may not go until spring mm -hmm. So would then it make sense to have the landscape architect consult them on the fencing as well? Potentially, and, and I apologize for kind of uh, clouding things up there. Um, basically, if we if we wanted any to have any chance whatsoever of this fence being put in before winter, we need to approve this. If we can't make that determination today, then it will be handled as a punch list item. We have here six, eight weeks on that fence material. It's already freezing pretty good up there. <laughs> Definitely. Fighting the weather, aren't you? Well, and it sounds like uh, coordinating with the landscaping would be optimal. And that, that, and that's, so you think you can consult with the landscape and get the landscaping done this season as well? I don't think for a minute that we can get the landscaping done this fall. Uh, uh, yeah. If only for the reason it's not opportune time to plant. So that would be a punch list item as well. It's it wouldn't be a punch list item because it's not in the original scope of work on the project. The landscaping is what is <clears throat> is an add-on. But it was it was not so included in it's the project. Crunch time in the spring. Well, for sure. Uh, it sounds to me like we may have an opportunity. Tell me again from your perspective, from the logistics of fulfilling this contract with this tank you, you could potentially have it completely done this year if this fence goes in yes and then we can then we would only concern ourselves with landscaping which is outside this original scope in this throughout the winter months to be initiated in the spring <clears throat> Any other questions? The only thing I'd suggest is, you know, consideration of where the location of the fence would go as far as near property lines. Who would you suggest make that determination? Or, um, that's a good question. I think you leave it to the landscape architects. Yeah. We pull, we give them, we let them give us input there, or we move forward and complete the project. Well, I would add that that if the alignment of the fence has changed, it would only shorten it. It wouldn't lengthen it because it's to the outside perimeter of the scope of work right now. Yeah. So if it was moved in or up the slope a little bit, uh, it would shrink slightly in distance. So it almost to me, the, the, what I'm considering in my mind is do we let the landscape architect have buy-in on the material of the fence and the placement, or do we proceed as presented here and then worry about the landscaping in the spring? So, uh, Mr. Mayor, the, the one thing I would like to say is that 
uh, if we're going to make this change order within the um, within the current uh, project for the tank, I, I think we need to go ahead and approve this change order now because the tank is going to be considered complete, and I think it's for us to change it before we actually complete it uh, makes more sense. It's, to have it as a punch item, it doesn't mean we have to put it in right now, but it means contractually it's better to go ahead and get it, uh, the change order made, before the project is deemed uh, significantly complete. And then we can, the fact that it's a punch item, that punch item could be executed in the spring. We you're going to have to have a fence up around that tank legally, right? So, so there's got to be a fence up before winter of some type if that tank's going to be in operation. Uh, as, as I understood it, it uh, that no, it does not necessarily have to be up before winter, but it does have to be up. Uh, and I was kind of confused about that as well when I was told that there was a scenario we could do substantial completion. Now, understand that substantial completion is much different than final completion. Um, that uh, and, the, and the hope is, obviously, when the contractor goes in and does the job, the point of sub substantial completion is their biggest cost, their biggest amount of effort is covered and leaving some to uh, finish any punch list items. You know, usually punch list items aren't of this size, but... We have much list items this big on the sewer plants. So. Yeah, I was going to say they were bigger on the. Yeah. Whole plant. Yeah. Yeah. I, I personally feel like the, the, what he's requesting will be a more aesthetically pleasing fence than what was going to go in otherwise. Any further questions or discussion? Good <clears throat> time, if you would please. Make the motion to approve change order for tank seven replacement project for alternate uh, fence material. Second. Roll call vote on item G. Mayor Porten Hall. Aye. Councillor Hubbard. Aye. Councillor Weeks. Abstain. Councillor Crane. Aye. Pass. Right, moving on to item H. Discussion to approve proceeding with the audible for your well. Director. Okay. Uh, last Wednesday at 11 o'clock, we uh, had our second bid opening for the audible for your well project, or so the back basin water system. And uh, we received two bids. Uh, the lowest of the two was from Codes Pump and Supply. Uh, it was significantly lower than the quote from uh, Stevens Brothers, and I'll ad address questions to that. Uh, as you can see, the, uh, the total cost of bid came in at $474,619. Uh, I do want to add that uh, uh, the reason why we did the, the second bidding on it is the initial bid. We received one bid from File Construction, the company that's doing Think 7 for us, because the whole scope of work is identified and uh, well drillers didn't have appropriate licensing to do the uh, underground portion of it from the well to the pump house. Yes. Uh, there were extremely high mobilization costs for the uh, installation of 150 feet of four inch C900 PVC, uh, a, a very high mobilization cost plus a very, very high per foot rate. So we identified things that could be done uh, in-house and it did, uh, Stevens Brothers was the well driller that bid with file construction and we did cut uh, about $300,000 off of what your initial bid was with file. Uh, but even with that, Coates Pump and Supply uh, came in significantly lower, actually less than half was Stevens Brothers. I do want to add that Stevens, uh, even as they bid it just for the well portion of it, had uh, had very high mobilization cost. Manager, Mr. Mayor, yeah, Director Epler, can uh, I ask you to explain to the council when we got these bids in and we were uh, somewhat suspicious of the low 
uh, bid, uh, the steps you took to assure that uh, that bid was reasonable. Absolutely. Uh, don't think for a minute that I jumped for joy just because I got a low bid. I'm very concerned. First question is, what did they miss? Okay. And uh, so the first call that I made was to tap and Mahoney with Dennis Engineering. Uh, he was not at the bid opening, but he got the, uh, he, he was in direct contact with us. And I told him, sounds too good to be true. Uh, you know, there's steps need to be take, taken to verify this. He jumped right on it. Uh, you know, one of the simple things they do is verify the math. Believe it or not, people can make a math mistake of a couple hundred thousand dollars. Sometimes by mistake, sometimes I don't know. Um, anyway, so he reached out to uh, the owner of Coach Pump and Supply and went through every line item, verified that he was good with the number, uh, uh, went through the, the relevant items in the, in the project manual, and then took the time to contact each and every reference for Coates Pump and Supply and got good references uh, from all of them. Uh, one of the uh, listed references was uh, Glorietta Geotechnical Sciences. It's the company that Dennis Engineering uh, uh, retained to help with the permitting process and the geotechnical survey and uh, all that portion of it. Uh, very knowledgeable, uh, uh, very involved in most municipal well projects, and they gave uh, Coats Pump and Supply a excellent review. Uh, but you know, I do want to note that the the project does require <laughs> performance bond. Uh, we always hate to get in a situation where we have to fall back on that. It's not like we can go down the road and grab another driller to finish a project. Um, but also, I will attest from uh, not just my time here at the village, but dealing with Den Dennis Engineering in the past, they don't leave a lot of openings for unjustifiable change orders. If you miss something, it's on you. Okay, so this is, they don't leave their projects open to... Uh, because there are people that can look at a project manual and uh, see opportunities to be a low bidder and uh, see potential opportunities for tremendous change orders. In my experience with Dennis Engineering, they don't allow that to happen to cover their bases. Thank you for all the additional information. Uh, any further questions or discussion? I just want to thank Dr. Epler for his due diligence here because it as he pointed out, the bid came in less than half of the other one. So, but sounds like we're certainly covered. Well, it's good to have somebody such as himself with the expertise that he has. Uh, so we're all grateful for the job you're doing. Thank you. Well, thank you. And it also helps that our engineer of choice grew up on a drilling rig himself. Mayor Pro Team, if you would please. Make a motion to approve. Proceeding with Agua Fria Well. Second. Roll call vote on item H. Mayor Pro Tem Howell? Aye. Councilor Crane? Aye. Councilor Weeks? Aye. Councilor Humpert? Aye. Pass. Moving on to item I. Discussion to approve resolution 2024 68 application for Trails Plus funding opportunity. Jay. Yes. Good evening again. Um, I'm looking to get approval of uh, resolution 2024-68, uh, which would allow the village to apply for the Trail Plus um, grant. This grant is with the New Mexico um, New Mexico Outdoor Recreation Division, and we would be applying for it, it's to, for the trail extension of uh, for the Frank Young Trail that I mentioned previously to go to the Allen Fields and the high school. And we would be applying for tier one of the grant, which is $100,000. And we'll be breaking it up into phases. And that would be, that would mainly go to um, planning and designing for, of the trail. And it is a two in one match. And um, the, the match is, in, is budgeted for, for this year. Any questions? And we're able to reapply for an additional grant. Yeah, there's. For the same project. Yes. There's I just, three different times you can apply as long as they have funding. Mm -hmm. I, I just had one. There were two different maps in my packet. They're slightly different. Um, yes. So there's a, there's a this one and this one. 
Yes. Thank you. And then we also have, I figured it would, Greg, you want to come up and talk about what y'all do as far as how these trails would uh, also benefit as a regional uh, trail? Thanks for the invitation. We, uh, I do summer running camps up here. And this past summer, I've been doing these for close to 30 years. And the big bulk of that was over in Kalski Valley. In 2020, I brought the camps over here in the summers, and it just ballooned. And we had 180 runners here this summer, and for next summer, it's already pretty much filled up. So we'll probably have over 200. We use the trails a lot. We also use the road system here. And kind of what I'm I'm looking to do is next summer, I've got a former Olympian coming in to help with the camps and then a couple All-Americans, former runners. Uh, and we have a, a professional women's group from California coming in next summer. And so the extension of these trails would just make everything, just it just attracts everything. Right now, most of the runners coming in are from the uh, Dallas Metroplex. We had teams from Houston in the past coming up. So most of them are from Texas. This past summer, there was a group in from Oklahoma. So it's spreading. And so, but anything like that, that can be done to extend these trails and maybe even connect to the community center from the trails. And, you know, maybe looking big picture, I don't know what land easements would look like. Maybe a trail connecting Angel Fire to Eagle Nest. Because then bikers would have a trail they could get in, you know, out and back a 20 mile bike. When we start getting professional runners in, they start looking to do 20, 30 mile runs on weekends. That would be an option for them rather than keeping them off of the, the main road to the village. Definitely phase one. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, any questions about the camps or anything that we do? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They said there was 180 kids this year. Kids and beds. 180. That we use mostly, we housed them at the Wheeler Peak Lodge. Yeah. We've pretty much had that filled up for this next summer through June. Mm -hmm. so, right. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Anything further? Well, I just add that you know when we connect this trail to Allen Fields, there's going to be an opportune for hosting, you know, running events and so forth. As far as parking, area, there's nowhere where to park. Uh, I mean, parking is limited on all the trailheads. I think once we hit, you know, connect, it's, it's going to open up a, a start, a starting line for events. Make a motion to approve resolution 2024-68 application for trails plus funding opportunity. Second. We'll call a vote on item I. Councilor Crane? Aye. Councilor Humbert? Aye. Councilor Weeks? Aye. Mayor Pro Tem Howe? Aye. Pass. Thank you. 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 Thank um, we asked to be added on to the uh, agenda today to for approval to contract services of Hartman and Majowski Design Group um, out of Albuquerque for architectural services for the design of the proposed new fire station one. Uh, the financial impact of the village will be uh, none. There is a $400,000 grant that we were awarded uh, for phase one of building this project uh, that we um, previous administration to the fire department had asked to extend uh, we were granted that extension, and because of the work that uh, Hartman and Majowski had previously done on a 2010 project, um, they were able to give us some plans that we had from that, and we were able to modify those. It's been approved through the state fire marshal um, as uh, qualifying for phase one of that grant, and so we'd like to proceed with them because they were the originating um, architecture group, and they have a pretty good working knowledge of uh, the scope of the project. Stand question. So we're going with a, a previously used design tweaked for our needs, not a ground up yeah, brand new design. In, yeah, in 2010, they had proposed a uh, the build of the fire station where it currently exists in addition to 
um, but because of some changes in land exchanges and so forth, it's not really going to fit those needs on that land. Um, Manager Weir's uh, offered up the land just south of us. I think it should be in the packet, but there's a, a aerial uh, photograph of uh, the new proposed location. And uh, because of those changes, it'll essentially change the design 100%, but they have a good working knowledge of the zoning and restrictions and everything for the village of Angel Fire since they've already uh, designed that previous building. Uh, I'd also like to add that they are uh, part of a statewide pricing agreement for CES. They are on the CES list, so we would be able to uh, bypass the RFP process and not have to have that slow the project down. Mayor Brooks, yeah. I make a motion to approve the proposal for architectural services for Fire Station One. Second. Full call vote on item J. Mayor Pro Tem Howe? Aye. Councilor Crane? Aye. Councilor Weeks? Aye. Councilor Humbert? Aye. Pass. Thank you, Jim. This time I would ask for a motion to move into executive <laughs> session for MSA 10 15 1 H 2 for pending legal matters. I would also like to extend the invitation for the Nan winners to join us in this executive session. I make the motion to move into executive session for NMSA 10 15 1 H 2 pending legal matters. Uh, Ferguson uh, versus Angel Fire, Bobbitt versus Angel Fire, Syme versus Angel Fire, Herrera versus Angel Fire. Benchmark versus Angel Fire and Maloney versus Angel Fire. Second. Roll call vote on item K. Mayor Pro Tim Hall? Aye. Councilor Crane? Aye. Councilor Weeks? Aye. Councilor Humbert? Aye. Pass. <laughs> 